today's task is to get a one inch thick four by eight sheet onto the CNC plasma table and cut out some hitch connectors for a low boy trailer. It's actually the video I did on showing you making the gussets for the low boy trailer. I've actually done three of those trailers now for that customer. Um, and two of the trailers he wants adjustable height uh, connector plates made for his hitch. Uh, I don't really know how to explain this very good, but that mechanical detach hitch on the front of a low boy trailer, um, you can run them at a different height where the big plate connects on the front. So it'll drop the bed of the trailer. I guess if this is the bed of the trailer, you know, you raise your hitch up, the bed drops down, right? Every inch counts when you're working with oversized loads. So, you know, if he can drop that trailer down just as far as possible, then he can uh, maybe get away from having to have an extra pilot car or pole car or extra expenses, and maybe he can go different routes too. So, it's a big deal. It's going to save him money. That's what it's going to amount to. So, uh, right now I've got to move a whole bunch of junk around. I've got a big old six foot auger sitting here in front of my garage, which. There is a video on that. Don't know if it's been released by the time you saw this video, because I don't know how it all goes in the editing world, but I've got a big old 11 cubic yard scraper sitting here in front of my garage too. So I've got to play musical stuff today and figure out how to get that sheet in here. My current thinking is I set this sheet on my four by eight foot utility trailer. I'm pointing that way because it's parked right out there on that side of the garage. Um, so it's on my little utility trailer, and I think I can back that trailer here into the garage, use my overhead hoist here, and slide the sheet over onto the table. That is my plan. If I can't do that, uh, I'll probably just cut whatever width I need to make these connectors for him off of that main plate, and just put that up on the plasma table and cut out the connectors. But I'd like to go ahead and just load the full sheet on there because if I go and slice off what I think I need and I end up making a mistake or whatever, I could end up wasting a lot of material and one inch thick plate is not cheap. So I don't want to make mistakes with this and screw myself over. You know, I'm a business. I got to think about money. <laughs> got to feed my wife and daughter, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, yeah. Let's get on it. I used the car, the Honda Pilot, and my little utility trailer and backed that piece of sheet metal. No, not sheet metal, plate. I keep saying sheet. It's a plate. It's one inch thick for crying out loud. Um, this plate is uh, 1,306 pounds, I believe. I have to look at my invoice again. I was actually going to use my little Cub Cadet garden tractor to move this thing in here, and I'm glad I did not because it would have not handled that tongue weight. I also have the plate forward, if you notice, it's not hanging over. Um, you know, it's not centered on the axle at all. So I'm going to go ahead and unhook the car, get it out of here. My wife actually needs to run to town, go get some paint. And there's a mosquito driving me nuts. Um, so and also I need to shut the garage door so I can get my trolley forward. I need to build me a bifold door for this garage. That way I don't have this space here all ate up with, you know, the the track because I can't use that much track when the garage door is open and usually you want the garage door open so you can you know back your load in so kind of annoying anyway just whatever you know what I'm saying I was going to use my lifting magnet here it's rated for 1300 pounds and I can pretty much guarantee you I don't want to lift the maximum of what these magnets are rated at so a while back I actually made this three-point lifter which is freaking awesome um, the only problem is it takes a lot of overhead space because I use it for my crane to unload sheets off the truck when I get my metal deliveries. So I am going to go ahead and use that three-point lifter and I'm going to rig up some slings. I'm just going to use some old climbing webbing I have here. This climbing webbing, this climbing webbing set up in the configuration I'm using it should be about 6,000 pounds breaking strength. It's 4,000 pounds singular line webbing. By the time you double it over, it should be eight, but then you put it on the knot, which reduces it. Should be about 6,000 pounds before it'll break. So those are gonna be more than strong enough with having three of them there. Uh, I am using retired climbing webbing. I don't trust it for climbing anymore, but that doesn't mean it's weak. 
climbing gear in general just needs to be retired kind of quickly just because your life is at risk. You don't want to take that risk of, you know, killing yourself, equipment failure, that kind of thing. So the guidelines for retirement on that are really strict and climbing gear can go long beyond what they tell you to retire it at. And if you all have any interest in seeing how strong climbing gear actually is and want to restore your faith a little bit in climbing gear, uh, go check out How Not to Highline. That is an amazing YouTube channel. He breaks a lot of climbing gear. Even if you're not interested in climbing gear, you should go check him out because he tests slings, which a lot of us in the metalworking industry use slings a lot, you know? Uh, so slings will translate over to our world. Also, he tests concrete bolts quite often which will translate into you know a lot of construction and that kind of stuff too so yeah go check him out he's got a lot of great videos up and he breaks a lot of stuff and it is amazing how strong stuff really is so how not to highlight go check it out highly recommend it electricity supply for this garage kind of sucks this entire garage literally runs on one 60 amp uh, 220 volt breaker so running the plasma cutter 85 amps and the fume exhauster it pretty much overloads it so I might end up tripping the breaker during this process so first thing I'm gonna do is reference the table a lot of times I don't do this it doesn't remember where zero is you know zero 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 it just you can set zero wherever you want on the table. And that way when I come over and cut on the corner of this plate, um, I'll know how far I am from home. And if the breakers trip and I lose power during this cut, then I can tell the table where it's at again, if that makes sense to you. All right, so my table runs on Mach 4. So I open that up. Runs a Warp 9 smooth stepper board in there, the breakout board, and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's kind of neat inside that controller box. And then to home this thing, um, I get it close. X is actually already parked clear at the end of the table. I can bring Y over. And I need to come up with Z a little bit. All right. So I've got the table pretty much parked close to uh, where it's supposed to be. The reason I get everything close to zero, zero, zero already is because it moves incredibly slow, which you'll see. I'll show it when it actually runs the homing process. And then I click reference all axes, and then I type in Y, E, yes, and hit okay and it'll do its thing and all it does is go off of the limit switches there it is so that's every access axis is zeroed and then uh we'll come over and I'll find the corner of the sheet here. We will actually use the laser pointer to make life a lot easier. Oh, wrong way. There we go. So, right about there is close. I'll, I'll change it a little bit. Um, I'll see if I can actually maybe round off those numbers a little bit, like tell it to go to 4.3 and round that one off to 4.5. That would be real easy to, uh, you know. So if something happens in the middle of a cut and I do trip the breaker, then I can home the axes again. You reference all the axes. There. So if we start at zero, then I can say, okay, that is negative 
and that was negative 4.5, and I say go to work zero, and it should return right back to the edge of that sheet, and I'm at zero, zero again. So, a little bit of explanation there for you. Hopefully that wasn't too long. Well, I just remembered that I don't think it's possible to pierce one inch plate. Um, so I'm going to have to drill holes in this. And to figure out where my holes need to be, I'm going to switch over to my scribe. I have the Easy Scriber. Freaking awesome attachment for this thing. Saves me a lot of time. Also allows us to do engraving on projects too. Alright, may not be the best thing. We'll see what's going on here. But I uh, got the scribe in. Um, I'm not going to make a scribe toolpath for this. I'm just going to dry run the machine. There's a huge difference. Um, so basically it's never going to lift the scribe off the plate when it does this. It's just going to drive around. Um, and not, it's not going to... Like if I made a toolpath, it would actually lift up and drive to the next spot, then set down. But the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to let it drag everywhere. That'll be fine for a test run. It's easier than spending all the time making another toolpath and blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, so what I'm going to do first is actually have it drive over to the start point. Okay. <laughs> I've changed my mind of doing it at normal cut speed because, uh, yeah, that's going to be slow. <gasps> you can see that circle 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 got some lines see my lead in there see my lead in there where are we at there we are so um, yeah This shows up on camera here. So I did center punch the lead where it starts there. And what I'm doing is lining up the edge of the drill bit with that center punch. So I'm not starting, you know, I'm not centering the drill bit on that center punch. I'm using that center punch just as a edge. And the reason I center punch is just make it a whole lot easier to see. So that's all I'm doing. Cause you know, you don't want the plasma cutter to start in the center of the hole, you want the plasma cutter to edge start. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, my software says this will be a little over 21 minute runtime. So, I don't know if I'm going to record all that.
It's a wee bit warm over here in this general area for some odd reason. Let's see what the slag looks like. God dang, I am so friggin' excited about this. Oh, that popped right out of there. Uh, get that hooked. Oh, my word, look at that. That is freaking amazing. That is almost straight edges. Very little taper. Oh, wow. Definitely some slag, which, you know, cutting that slow, expected there to be some. But holy crap, that's awesome. That one's stuck to the slab. Oh, it's forking hot over here. Holy crap. Dude. <laughs> oh, my word. Man, they sure do stick to the slats, though. It's not stuck to the plate, it's just stuck to the slats. Um, actually, as big as this plate is, I could have taken these other two slats out, but I'm not going to move the plate now, so it'll be all right. That one might be stuck here in the corner where it shut off. I don't think it quite finished the cut right there, actually. I should have done a lead out on that, I guess. I did not. Uh, since I did do a lead out, there's probably like an eighth of an inch or quarter inch down here at the very bottom that's not completely cut through. Got this plate flipped over, and uh, some of the dross did fall off when I flipped it over and it banged on the table. But, I mean, even at that, I mean, that, if that stuff's falling off that easy, that's just freaking amazing. But, I mean, this stuff is just... That one's on there pretty good yet. Yeah, that one came off. So, I mean, there's just virtually no dross on it. I think that's amazing. But there you can see, uh, when I didn't do a lead out, it didn't quite finish its cut. Uh, I was able to break it, finally. Moved it back and forth several times, got to break. But otherwise, man, I am tickled pink with this. That's gonna it's going to be very little effort to just hit with the hand grinder real quick and polish that up. But I think I'm going to take this thing outside and cool it off because it is hot and I don't want it heating up this garage. Well, before we cut out the second plate, I thought I'd show you this real quick. Um, I haven't even done any grinding on this outside edge at all. I just took the hammer and knocked off the other couple spots of dross and that is my surface finish. I think that is just absolutely outstanding. Um, I did take the die grinder and go inside and get rid of where the leads started there. Um, yeah. Uh, I remembered from other stuff that um, you're not supposed to do leads on circles because the way the plasma table will run, it'll kind of sort of take off cross country a little bit when it comes in. So you're supposed to actually start right on the edge. But since I gotta drill this hole, you know, in the pl in the plate, since I can't pierce it, I wanna come in just a little bit and start on that. So just a little bit of die grinder work there. Made it fine. And this is a three inch shaft. It's supposed to have a three inch hole in it. Um, and so scrap piece of three inch shaft. Plenty big. I actually went a little bit over. My hole is actually like 40 thousandths over, uh, which is what I want. So it came out perfect. So, you know, I have to grind off my lead here. I've got it changed on the new piece. I'm doing a lead out as well, so maybe it'll help get rid of that. I'm hoping. But boy, I'm just tickled pink. This is amazing. All right. So now let's go do the other piece. Not a surprise, my breaker trip, but it's not a big deal. 
I just simply made a new tool path that goes the opposite direction and there is no lead on it so it should start right on that edge and we'll go the opposite way. I am going to have to rehome my table and figure all that out but uh, hey I wrote down all that information so I knew where we started at on the XY coordinates so it shouldn't be a big problem so uh, yeah off screen here I'll home the table and uh, bring it back when this thing starts cutting. with how these things turned out shaft will stick out of the hitch here so he can have one ride height there swinging over to another ride height there uh, I will try to get you pictures here because I am actually getting ready to hop in the vehicle and go take this to him but anyway I am just absolutely tickled pink with this surface finish I I've done very little one inch cutting with this thing. I just got done with a little tiny project of one inch and uh, yeah, had no idea what it would do on this. I'm gonna to have to get a little better electrical in here. Well, YouTube, I'm so happy. I took the pieces over to the customer. He had the hitch set up, you know, just with the regular connector plates from the factory on it. And I took my piece and I slid it on there and it fit perfectly. So the original ride height is exact. Um, and I did not hang around for him to detach the hitch and try the other side, but we figured, you know, the lower position should work just fine, whatever. So a couple days later, he actually sent me these photos here. The center of that pin is busted off weld. He had to remove the keeper plate that keeps those plates from falling off. So he'll grind that down and re-weld on those keeper plates at the very end of that top shaft there. But the customer is very happy with these. Uh, he'll get them all painted and make it look all pretty. Just like he's done with the rest of the trailer here. And if you notice here in this last photo, you can see a little bit of gap between the hitch and the bed of the trailer there. Well, quite a bit of gap actually. That makes the hitch tilt back, essentially what it does. and it gives you a gap there and that drops the ride height of the trailer. Now some of you might be saying, oh that's dangerous. But this trailer manufacturer actually does make these three hole plates that I just built. That does allow the hitch to run at a different angle like that and drop the load down. So it is a factory approved method of dropping your ride height. Alright, I really hope you all enjoyed this video. It got a little bit long. I debated about whether or not I should uh, put load in the plate onto the table at the beginning of this video, in the video. Uh, so leave me a comment below Let me know if you watched that section or if you just skipped right over the transferring the plate from my truck or whatever onto the table I figure some people want to see details like that and some people don't so uh, Yeah, voice your opinion in the comments that way I can get a gauge of uh, If stuff like that is stuff I should keep putting in videos or if you guys just want to see the plasma table running And that's it and not show how I get stuff in and out of the garage all the time so uh, from my perspective, I like to share the information of moving this big heavy stuff around with you because I know there are some of you out there who struggle to move stuff. And well, I just like to share information. That's the whole reason I do this channel is just to share information. That's what I enjoy about it. So anyway, see y'all in the next one.